I don't know if you saw the video of what happened with Kyle Lowry and the fan courtside during the game, but I'm wondering, does it disturb you? We've talked a lot about these incidents around the league, but does it disturb you that it happened at Oracle? And does it make it worse that the person involved uh, apparently is a member of the organization? Uh, I have not seen the play. Um, I, I, I didn't see it last night. I saw the commotion afterwards, um, but I haven't seen a replay. And I didn't really even know uh, the story until this morning. I know our organization has put out a release, and I will let the release speak for itself. It's really not, uh, um, you know, my uh, jurisdiction, but. Um, you know, I will also personally apologize to, to Kyle and, and to the Raptors. That's uh, unacceptable. Steph Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Um, uh, Kyle Lowry jumped into the crowd last night. One of the uh, minority owners from the Warriors shoved him. I don't know if you're familiar with the video, but just wondering about your reaction to what happened, how the Warriors uh, are, you know, how their Warriors image might be affected by the incident uh, and this one minority owner. Uh, obviously an unfortunate situation all the way around. Credit Kyle the way he handled it. Um, you know, a lot of different reactions you could have had, um, but he handled it correctly. Uh, I know our team and organization is is um, addressing the you know the situation and will act accordingly. Um, you don't want to see that in our game and. And hopefully it doesn't happen. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it was a reflection of how we handle you know business here we, you know, as a Warriors organization and franchise. We we had, you know have a high standard and, and do things with class and professionalism. Um, and I know Mark is apologetic and and whatnot, but we'll handle that situation on the front. Like I said, the organization is going to do that, and and just want respect for the game all the way around, fans, owners team, you know, players, coaches, everybody, because uh, there's so, so much good happening on the court that we want to keep the spotlight on that. You've probably um, seen the interaction between Kyle Lowry and a fan. The fan turns out to be a minority owner of the team. Um, and I'm just wondering what your take is on that. And I know that you've gotten your fair share of harassment in visiting arenas. I'm just wondering, like, is do you feel that players are – kind of vulnerable, a little bit under attack? And and what do you think should be maybe done about it? I think players are definitely vulnerable. Uh, you know, anytime you're in a situation where you can do no right, like um, in defending yourself, you're vulnerable. So, you know, if a fan says whatever they want to you and then you say something back, you're fine. Um, if Kyle was to then hit back, a lot more than fine would have then happened to Kyle. Um, so uh, in a situation where you're essentially helpless, you're always going to be vulnerable in anything in life. It's not, it's not just on a basketball court. In any situation, and you can't help yourself, you're vulnerable. Um, and so I think, you know, as players, we definitely are. Um, but I think, you know, you have to give Kyle a lot of credit uh, in the way he handled it. Um, I mean, that's, you know, you're talking, you're playing in the NBA Finals, so your emotions are running high. Uh, for him to handle it the way he did uh, says a lot about his character, um, a lot about him as a man and the way he handles himself. Uh, that was that was great uh, to see the way he handled that. And, you know, as far as, you know, it all goes, uh, you know, the league has really grown and, and really having a no-nonsense approach uh, when it comes to fan interactions and fan and player interactions. Um, you know, they've shown that over the course of the years now, you know, and like, if you, I mean, it goes all the way back to the malice at the palace. Uh, and, you know, even from, you know, over the last couple of years to fans, you know, getting removed from games for, you know, uh, getting out of line, like the league has really taken a stand on that. And, you know, uh, obviously, you know, this is it's the NBA Finals, so there's a ton of, you know, eyes and attention on this. Uh, and I know, you know, every decision that I've seen, uh, you know, Adam have to make every tough decision. Um, you know, he's made those decisions. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but. 
you know, you got to give Kyle a lot of credit for the way he handled the, the situation. Uh, he was a true professional uh, in the way he handled that. Are you curious if there's maybe a double standard um, when you're talking about a partial owner um, in, in the way this will, will be handled? Uh, and, think, and also, are you embarrassed at all for the, the organization that it was one of your owners? I mean, obviously, you know, this organization, um, you know, from the time I've been here and everything I've known about this organization has been a top-notch uh, upper echelon organization. And so uh, definitely not the type of thing that you want uh, out of somebody out of the ownership group uh, when you're talking to the organization. And as far as the double standard, it's hard to really sit here and say uh, there's a double standard when it comes to owner. And to my knowledge, there's been no ruling, no overall ruling yet. So. Uh, I think before we start talking double standard, we need we at least need to get a league a fair chance to respond. Uh, you know, I think as as much as everybody would want there to be a decision already, like I, I've been a part of situations, um, a lot of them, where not necessarily that, <laughs> but where you you gotta talk to league security and then this guy and that guy and they got to interview everybody like that stuff take time so as much as we all want uh and when i say we all i mean as the world in general want a response right now like the one thing i can say is they do their diligence and so uh you just gotta let the process play out and see what happened but i'm not going to sit here and say that there's a double standard and not give them a chance to respond and, and make whatever ruling they're going to make tim in the back Raymond Timpiakam, The Athletic, just following up on that a little bit, just specifically because he's a minority owner, Le LeBron has mentioned on his Instagram that he should be held to a higher standard. You're, 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 it's, you're, you're part of the team. You're part of representation of the team. Would you agree with that, that, that a minority owner should be held to standards of behavior higher than someone else? Uh, I mean, I think you have to be. Um, you know, when, you, when you're speaking of, th like, as players, we are held to a different standard. You know, um, coaches are held to anybody in the in, in the NBA circle. You're held to a different standard, and so I think it's it's no different. You know, when you start talking um, of anybody in, a, in any ownership group in the league, uh, you're held to a different standard. And I mean, you can say it's unfair or not. Like whatever your opinion is on it, whether you're one way or another, that's just the reality of it. Uh, we're all held to a different standard, and that's not going to change. You know, this this game continues to grow. That standard continues to grow. You know, um, so you're you're not a player in 2019 is held to a different standard than a player was in 1999. Like that's just the reality of where our game is today. We're all held to a different standard. 